Hi everybody. Thought I'd let you in on something I tried a uh, couple of days ago and it actually worked. So I'm going to try a lot more complex design. Um, what I did is I took a uh, copper clad phenolic standard printed circuit board blank <clears throat> and I coated it with an acrylic spray paint and I allowed it to dry and then I lasered off some of the acrylic paint and then etched it and produced what is essentially a printed circuit board. I didn't think it would work and it did. It worked very well. So I'm trying a little bit harder project this time. I'm going to use a Nanino uh, circuit board print that's a uh, from 2012 I believe a uh, single-sided Arduino clone uh, board developed um, by a gentleman in Russia, I believe. I'll link the uh, the uh, Hackaday story about it. And uh, in any case, <clears throat> this uh, board has been coated with black paint and allowed to dry. And I'm going to transfer the image for the circuit board for a Nanino onto this and then etch it and hopefully we'll have a board that would be a usable printed circuit board. Never really seen this particular process done, so I figured I'd document it and show you how it worked out. And away we go. All right, so we've got our blank down here and the uh, laser waiting to be cut. And we've got over here, we've got uh, layout up here in laser gerbil which is what I'm using you'll notice <clears throat> that I'm actually doing a positive cut because I want the resist to remain so away it goes it's saying that it should take about uh, 30 minutes I think it might take a little less but away it goes All right, now we've got our board off of the laser, and let's take a look at it. It's kind of difficult to see, but you might be able to see it with the reflection there. You can see that the paint has been burned, and right now it's still sitting on there as kind of a, an ashy powder. And what I'm going to do now is just rinse it with water, and that'll wash away that burnt paint and leave us with exposed copper. Now I'm just gently rubbing my my thumb over it. I'm not uh, applying any pressure or anything like that. Although the remaining paint is pretty solidly on there, I don't want to loosen it up. All right, I wanted to show you how this is going here. So now we've got this in the etchant. Uh, this is a poor man's etchant, which is equal parts. Uh, normal white distilled vinegar and hydrogen peroxide from the uh, typical pharmacy grocery store 3% solution and uh, table salt and it's just mixed together and the uh, board is placed in there and the resist the paint keeps that solution from eating away the copper what I like doing is taking a uh, small paintbrush and just kind of giving it a stir over it so it removes the uh, corrosion level. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be having uh, too much friction against the paint that remains that's masking because well you don't want to actually um, 
knock away the knock away the actual mask paint there because uh, then of course the acid will get in there and dissolve it away um, but as you can see that fizzing in there that is our copper being dissolved away off the board by the solution here uh, you'll find that you end up adding more table salt as the time goes on I find adding it directly on top of the surface is pretty effective um, you just shake it on sprinkle it on trying to get some in the general area of every spot on the board and you'll watch it fizz up and that is the reaction producing depending on who you ask either hydrochloric acid or parasitic acid um, either way it's dissolving the copper into the solution um, and leaving the bare board where the board is exposed in any place that the board is covered by the paint it is not dissolved away so um, this takes a while um, depending on the, the area of the copper that you're really dissolving away and that type of thing the temperature of the solution all kinds of stuff this can take a couple of minutes or up to about a half an hour uh, if you're using commercial board etchant such as uh, ferric chloride or hydrochloric acid then you get a lot faster etch but frankly I didn't have access to any of that stuff right now and I wanted to use the poor man's etch method and it does work it just takes a little longer so we'll come back in a few minutes and take a look at the results alright uh, thought I'd show you the progress here as you can see the solutions turning quite greenish blue um, and that's because of the copper dissolved into it and you can see actually that a lot of the copper has been eaten away that was exposed and I'm gonna pull it up here just a little bit so you can see where we are in all of this as you can see there's still you can see the reddish copper that's still there that still has to be dissolved away so this has to go back in for a few more minutes it's been in here about 20 minutes so far and I'm just agitating it and all of that sort of thing and we'll leave it for a little bit longer I would say maybe another maybe another 10 minutes I didn't want to remove all the copper from the board and just leave the traces but quite clearly it's working quite well uh, you can see up here I actually did uh, was poking around at it with the back end of the paintbrush there and loosen the paint so it's etching out a little bit there that's my own fault uh, but the process seems to be working wonderfully it should be done like I said maybe uh, five ten minutes we'll come back and uh, give it a check alrighty alright so we should be done let's take a look this is coming out now there's probably about a half hour total in the in the acid oh look at that Look at that. You can see a little bubble in the paint there. I wonder if the acid got up underneath. But as you can see, we've successfully removed the copper from all of the exposed areas. The mask is still intact. So now I'm going to give it a wash and we'll see how we do. Got a uh, Scotch Bright pad. And We'll use that, I think. Alright, so we'll bring you over here. Right, so we've got our board here. I'm just going to take the scotch brake pad here. And just get off the paint. 
Oh, nothing's really on there. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a little acetone. You know, we have to polish them over. Because that'll make a lot easier job of it. So there is our printed circuit board, obviously. Um, it worked. Uh, you can see actually through the light transmission from the sun through the board and everything else, the completeness of the traces. There's those holes that I made uh, with the paintbrush and the paint, so it etched through there a bit. But, as you can see, this is a perfectly serviceable copper printed circuit board and I did this by lasering off spray paint off of a normal copper phenolic printed circuit board blank it was etched using a solution of standard kitchen vinegar, 3% hydrogen peroxide solution from any local pharmacy or grocery store, and regular table salt. Now this probably is clearly not the most efficient way to produce a printed circuit board when you need one, but it works. So that should just about do it for this. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Subscribe, uh, all that wonderful stuff. Doing more things that I shouldn't probably do.